Hey friends, Matt aka Martin here and today I'm going to give you my one top tip for improving your workflow in Ableton Live. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below, subscribe if you're new and if you really enjoy this video, make sure to head on over to my buy me a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee, support the channel and get some really cool stuff in the process. But without any further ado, let me show you my one top tip for improving your workflow in Ableton Live. Okay, so I lied. This one top tip is actually more like three top tips all rolled up into one and it's all about saving defaults. And we can have track defaults, device defaults, and set defaults. And basically what they are is that whenever we load up a device, a track, or a set, it automatically loads up with a certain set of parameters. Maybe if we load up a set, it's got certain tracks. If we load up a track, it's got certain devices, volume settings. And if we load up a device, it's got certain parameters set to where we normally like them. And by setting up our own personal defaults, we can improve our workflow significantly so that we make sure we don't have to do the same things over and over and over again whenever we set up a new device track or set. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video to check out some of my recommended default settings for your devices and tracks. But first, let's take a look at how we can actually set up a default device in Ableton Live. Okay, so here in Ableton Live, I'm going to first demonstrate this with the wavetable device. So I'm going to actually load up a wavetable device on this MIDI track. And you'll see that by default, when I load it up, it has a certain set of parameters. It starts out with a sine wave and it's got a filter on a low pass setting and a bunch of different envelopes on different settings, some LFOs on different settings, etc. Now this is cool, but when I load up my wavetable, I want it to sound slightly different. I want it to start as a sawtooth wave and maybe some other stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is actually go and change some parameters here. Maybe set my oscillator one position to 66 or so percent so it's a sawtooth wave maybe change my amp envelope so that it has no attack maximum sustain and no release maybe do similar things with my envelope two and three so maybe set no sustain no attack for both my envelope two and three and then maybe go to my matrix or my midi settings and potentially turn down the velocity to amplitude so i can make that zero so that our velocity isn't affecting our amplitude and now all i need to do is right click on the device title bar anywhere and click on this save as default preset and now if i go to my second midi track and load up a wavetable, it's gonna have those settings there by default. And you can do this for any Ableton Live device, which includes instruments, MIDI effects, and audio effects. We can also do the same thing for tracks. So for example, every time I load up an audio track, I wanna have two different devices on it. I wanna have a channel EQ, and I also wanna have a compressor. And so I've now added these two devices to this audio track here. And maybe I also wanna have my default audio track have a default track volume of negative six dB so that I still have a little bit of headroom every time I load up a new audio track. Now that I've done this, I've got my channel EQ and my compressor set up and I've also got my audio track having a track volume setting of negative six dB. I can go up to the track header, at the top, right click it and click on save as default audio track. Now if I load up a new audio track, I can right click and insert an audio track. We'll see that it has a fader setting of negative 6 dB and we have a channel EQ and a compressor already loaded up onto that track. We can do the exact same thing for MIDI tracks as well. Say for instance that we wanted to have certain devices loaded up on MIDI tracks too. Potentially the same thing, a channel EQ and a compressor. Let's add a channel EQ and a compressor to our MIDI track right here. And you'll notice that when I add audio devices to a MIDI track, we then actually get access to change the track volume fader. So I might do exactly the same thing and pull the track volume fader down to negative six dB. And now once again, I can simply right click on the MIDI track header and go to save as default MIDI track. And now if I add in a new MIDI track, we have those same settings. We have a channel EQ, we have a compressor and we have the track volume set to negative six dB. Now this is great, but what if I actually want to change or remove my defaults? Well, let's say that I wanted to change the default wavetable device that I just set up. I could add another wavetable onto one of these tracks. I could again adjust some parameters. Maybe I could change my filter circuit here to an MS2 and have 3 dB of drive because that's something maybe I always do whenever I load up a wavetable device. And maybe I actually decided that I want some release on my amp envelope so I can set my release to maybe 150. Now, all I need to do is simply right click on the device title bar again and go to save as default preset and it will pop up with this box that says a default 
preset for device wavetable already exists. Do you want to override it? Click yes. And now, again, if we go to another MIDI track and load up our wavetable, we'll see that we have those settings applied. We have the MS2 filter circuit with 3 dB of drive and 150 milliseconds on our release on our amp envelope. The same thing holds true for track defaults. So say for instance, I wanted to change my default audio track and actually make it negative 12 dB on the fader instead. I could set that to negative 12 dB, right click on my audio track and go to save as default audio track. We'll get that same pop-up menu that says a default audio track already exists. Do you want to override it? Just click yes. And now if we insert a new audio track, we'll see that our fader position is set to negative 12 dB. But what if you actually want to remove a track or device default entirely? Well, you can actually do so in your user library. So if I go to my user library in my browser, you'll see there is a folder called defaults. If you unfold that folder, you'll see a few different subfolders in there. You'll see a subfolder for creating tracks and a subfolder for instruments. And if you've created some audio effect defaults, you'll see some audio effect defaults in there as well as a few other different defaults too. If you wanna remove a default for a certain device, device or track, all you have to do is come into this defaults folder and maybe I want to remove that wavetable default that I set up. I would just go to my instruments, find that wavetable default, simply hit delete and then just click yes I want to move it to the trash. And now if I load up a wavetable device, let's say on a new MIDI track, it will be restored to its initial Ableton Live stock default settings. The same also goes for audio and MIDI tracks. So if you want to remove those track defaults, you can come to the creating tracks subfolder and just delete both this audio track and MIDI track folders, hit move to trash. And now if I load up a MIDI track or an audio track, we'll see that it's returned to its absolute basic default settings. Now I also mentioned that there's a way to create default sets. A default set basically allows us to create a session file that loads up every time we create a new session inside of Ableton Live. For instance, let's say I always wanted to have a limiter on my master. I could insert a limiter onto my master here. And let's say I also wanted to have a different reverb for my reverb send, change this to a hybrid reverb instead of normal reverb here select this, turn this all the way up to 100% wet. And maybe I also wanted to have my two MIDI tracks here grouped and my two audio tracks here grouped. And maybe I wanted to have my group here be blue and my group here be red. And I wanted my master to be black, my reverb to be yellow and my delay to be purple. Now what I can do is go up to the file menu and click on save live set as default set. You'll also see this option here that says save live set as a template. We're not gonna worry about that for the moment, but I am gonna do a video in the future on templates. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. But for now, we're gonna click on save live set as default set. Hit enter, and now we have this default live set right here. Now, if I go and create a new live set file, new live set, I don't wanna save changes here we'll see that we have the exact same settings loaded up. This group with these two MIDI tracks, this group with these two audio tracks, a hybrid reverb, a delay, and a limiter on our master. So that's how you set up device track and set defaults inside of Ableton Live. But now I wanna go through a few of my recommended default settings for both devices and tracks. First up, wavetable. Whenever I load up a wavetable, I always like to start with a sawtooth wave. I'm going to set the oscillator one position to 66%. I also like to have my envelope be entirely neutral. So I want to have as fast attack as possible, maximum sustain, and probably about 300 milliseconds of release. And that's it for me. I really don't want to change anything else too much here. Next up, operator. For operator, I really only want to change two things. I want to turn off the filter and I also want to go to operator one and set the velocity to volume to actually be at zero percent and this is a personal preference for me and in fact i should have done it with the wavetable as well but this just allows me to actually add in velocity sensitivity later if i want to and not start with it by default next up the compressor first off i'm going to go into my sidechain toggle option and turn off the sidechain eq i'm then going to switch it from rms to peak mode i'm going to set the knee to zero and i'm going to change the view to the collapsed view next up auto filter. The only thing I want to change in auto filter is I just want to keep it on low pass mode and set the filter frequency cutoff 
all the way up to 19.9 kilohertz. This way, if I add an auto filter, I know that it's already completely open and I don't need to worry about my auto filter by default removing some high frequencies. Next up, the glue compressor. And the only thing I wanna do with the glue compressor is just engage this soft clip setting right here. Next up is Ableton Live Saturator. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here. Just engage the soft clip on the output and not change anything else. Because again, I like being able to have this function as a clipper as well as a saturator. Next up is Spectrum. I wanna go down to this little auto option right here, click this so it's set to range, and then just set my refresh rate to 40. Now what this is gonna do whenever the Spectrum receives a signal, instead of constantly adjusting the view here, it's gonna stay static and allow me to view the information much easier. Finally, for the devices, we're gonna look at auto pan, and I'm simply just gonna set the auto pan LFO rate type to be synced rather than in Hertz. Now for the track defaults, in terms of the devices you put on them, that's really over to you and the kinds of devices that you often start with. I recommend setting them up exactly how I set them up earlier in this video. So I'll have a channel EQ, a compressor, and I'll bring the track fader volume down to negative six dB. This way I have really quick access to some basic EQ and compression controls, as well as knowing that whenever I insert an audio track, it's not gonna be super loud, especially if I'm working quieter in a session with a lot of tracks. And I like to set up the exact same settings for or a default MIDI track as well. If you'd like to download my own personal device and track defaults, I'll put a link down in the description where you can download them for free over on my Buy Me A Coffee page. But of course, know that these are entirely subjective and just some of my recommendations rather than the absolute golden devices that you have to use as your defaults. But there is the video. That is my top tip for improving your workflow in Ableton Live. If you liked the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new. And if you really enjoyed this video, head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can download my personal device and track defaults as well as get some really cool stuff and support me in the process. That's it for now. Make sure to check out a previous video of mine here and I'll see you all in the next video.